Hi, and welcome to another SketchUp Australia guide video. In this video, we'll look at getting started with Sapphira. First of all, we'll need to install Sapphira. To do this, let's launch SketchUp and go to Help and Manage License. I first want to check that we have access to SketchUp Studio. You can only use Sapphira if you have access to SketchUp Studio. Let's go to an internet browser and search for Sapphira Download or Download Sapphira. You should be able to find this Section 2 page, which is the instructions for the installation. Let's scroll down and for a PC, let's select this first download button. The Mac download button is a bit further down. Once that's installed, let's open the folder location and unzip the installation download file. I'm just going to extract it here. Here's now the unzipped installation file. What I need to do is save the location of this file so that I can quickly access it later. Or you can just remember where you downloaded it to. Let's now go back to SketchUp, Window and Extension Manager. At the bottom of this window, you'll see Install Extension. Go ahead and click that. Enter the destination or navigate there. You'll find, obviously, the Safari for SketchUp installation file and go ahead and press open. That's it. Safari has now been installed. I might actually scroll down here and just show you. Let's now launch Safari for the first time. Let's go Extensions, Safari Plugin, and Show Safari Plugin. You'll first be asked to log in to your Trimble account that is associated with your SketchUp Studio subscription. Go ahead and enter your email address, click Next, then enter your password. If you've forgotten your password, click Forgot Password button. When you're ready, sign in. Safari will take a little while to load at first, but once it's done that, it'll look like this. Let's do a very quick run through. So at the very top here, we have a decision whether we want energy and daylight or just energy or daylight analysis. To the right of that, we have that little cogwheel. And here we have a series of different settings, including the ability to sign out if we wanted to. What you'll notice is on the left, we have an energy section. And on the right, we have a daylight visualization setting. I'm just going to set up this uh, project by choosing the project type and the location. I'm going to change some of the input settings. And if ever you need to, um, you can choose one of these settings, modify it like this, and then save those inputs so that you can recycle or reuse those same inputs again and again. Now, we won't go through that in detail, obviously, but um, I will show you on the right-hand side that you do have a number of options for what type of daylight visualization and analysis you want to conduct during the simulation. Now, we have our initial settings for our an analysis, but we don't have any geometry. So I'll just quickly put something in the background here. It's a 10 by 10 meter square. Push pull that up by three meters. And then I've got a half a meter offset so that I can make this into a glazing surface. Now, to do that, I can right click and tag it as operable glazing. Now, I could have just made that surface transparent with a SketchUp material. Uh, but tagging it does just exactly the same thing. In fact, I generally recommend that if something is going to be glazing, you apply it as uh, a transparent material and Safari will automatically identify it as glazing. Now, you would have seen me there add or confirm the materials for the roof and the shading. Now I'm going to go back into Safari and show entity types. This is now confirming that Safari is identifying all of those very simple surfaces as the correct type. So shading devices, roof, glazing, walls, floors, etc. Okay, looks like we're about good to go. I'm going to close down the entity types palette and then update the analysis. This will obviously take a while to run. What's happening here is SketchUp and Safari are sending all this information up to the cloud to be processed on a server which will have the results returned back to you. Notice the daylight visualization there. It's at a funny angle. Basically, that angle represents what's in our uh, viewport here in SketchUp. So I'm going to standardize that with a top-down view in parallel projection. And you can see that's now represented here. Quick run through, overall energy, energy distribution, 
daylight analysis, and here's a breakdown of HVAC energy sources and sinks. And to the right you have the guidance based off of your results. We could go through now that we've run that simulation and make changes to either the geometry or the settings here, but instead I'm just going to upload this to Sapphira for the next stage of more detailed analysis. Once again, I'm going to log into my SketchUp Studio account and sign in. And Sapphira will launch for a new project. I'm going to create a new project, give it a name. Notice we have the site address, weather data based off of that address, what type of building it is, and a space use. I've created a lot of those space uses, so don't worry if you don't have that full list. Every time you create a new space use, it'll be added to that list. Okay, so here's the Safari web portal interface. The first thing I do is I change up or decide on a zoning regime for this project. I'm going to actually change this to a one zone per floor and then run the simulation by pressing the update button in the top left hand corner. Now I'm actually going to copy the address here and put this into Chrome. I just find that it runs a bit faster in Chrome and I'm just used to the fonts etc that come through Chrome. Okay, now that that's all loaded, we're not going to spend the time to go through each of these in detail, but in brief, on the left is the inputs, on the right is the outputs. Here you can share your project, but probably the most important thing is this clone button. When you're ready to make a clone of an analysis, go ahead and press the clone button, and then make changes to the inputs for that particular clone or instance. Once you've made those changes, give it a name if you need to, and then update that simulation. Now the purpose of this is so that you can make iterative changes. As you make a change to a clone, you, you assess the change, then you clone it again, and then make a further change. And that way you can see a progression of how those changes are affecting the performance of your simulation. Now I like to call this area where the clones are stored the HUD. And in the HUD you can change what outputs you're interested in when comparing your different clones. Okay, there's the quickest intro you'll ever get for Savara.